Hello, my name is Monica and today we're going to be talking all about how to get started with your first vendor market. First of all, what is a vendor market? A vendor market, sometimes also known as a craft fair, is an in-person event where a bunch of different businesses come together, each with their own booth, ready to sell to customers. Usually this is an advertised event, so customers come with the intention of buying things from small local shops. Sometimes the markets are associated with a general farmer's market, a music festival, some sort of citywide celebration, and so vendor markets can generally draw very big crowds. Many handmade goods small businesses will do vendor markets because this is really the only time they're able to showcase their work in person versus online. And also they're just a fun way to meet customers in person, hear feedback, real time and to have some fun with putting all of your inventory in different displays and creating a little shop for yourself. I've been doing vendor markets or I like to call them pop shops for a few years now and I've done a bunch. Some markets happen weekly, some happen monthly, some only happen annually. Markets will range from only having 10 vendors all the way up to having a hundred vendors or even more sometimes. But if you are thinking about doing a vendor market craft fair pop-up shop type situation, keep watching and I'll tell you the five different things you will need to think about before doing a vendor market. First thing is signing up for a vendor market. How do I even find out that a market is happening beforehand? Who do I contact? Is there a fee? Is there an application? Let me take you through it. First thing to do is to make sure you're following relevant groups on social media. On Instagram and Facebook, a lot of the times cities will post that certain markets are happening in parks around the town. Here where I live in Hoboken, our mayor will announce that different festivals are happening on Main Street. And on those announcements on social media, oftentimes there'll be some sort of contact email that you can reach out to if you have questions about being a vendor. Other ways to find vendor markets are really to just walk around. <laughs> on weekends especially and in the summers, there are often a lot of markets. You can stop by any of the vendor booths and ask anyone really how to sign up for the next market. Vendors are really supportive of each other, so don't feel afraid to stop and talk to someone. Once you do get in contact with a market organizer, they will most likely send you an application, which is typically just a Google form, and you just fill in details about your business, types of products you plan on bringing, your general price point, and general contact info. The fees to do vendor markets range dramatically. <laughs> it could be anywhere from $0 for nonprofit events all the way up to thousands of dollars. Now, I typically stick to the ones that are within $50 to $150 per event. No matter how much the fee is, you want to make sure that it's an event where enough people will come so that you will easily be able to make your vendor fee back in sales. For example, one of my most successful events is here in Hoboken, it's called the Hoboken Arts and Music Festival. Tens of thousands of people come to that, a lot of them being my target demographic. The vendor fee for that event is $100, but I make that up within the first 20 minutes of the market usually. There's a lot of guess and check work with joining markets. Sometimes you have to join one and realize it's not that great of a market. Sometimes you join one, you don't bring enough inventory because you realize it was is super successful and you should have brought more but you'll get the hang of it the best way to do it is to just keep doing more and more markets moving on to the second thing you will need to consider before joining a vendor market is booth materials now when you eventually join a market you will be designated usually a 10 foot by 10 foot square spot sometimes it's smaller sometimes it's bigger and many times the event organizers won't provide anything it's really just a blank 10 foot by 10 foot spot. So the first thing you'll need is a canopy tent. You want to make sure that you have some sort of overhead covering in case it rains and also because of the sun. Having the tent also makes your booth look a lot more cohesive and it shows clear boundaries of when your shop begins and ends because the next booth is literally right up next to yours usually. Along with that canopy tent, you want to bring sandbags. I would say 25 pounds each on each leg depending on how windy it is where you're doing the vendor market, but you would rather be safe than sorry because those tents could go flying sometimes. Find a canopy tent that's easy to assemble and disassemble because the last thing you want is to get stressed over setting up your booth. The next big ticket item you'll probably need is a table and chairs. Most brands display their products on a table. Sometimes they have really elaborate displays, but really all you need is a table to get started. And markets can last hours, sometimes six to 10 hours long. And so you definitely wanna bring a chair so that you can rest every now and then. Other things you'll need for your booth are displays. So depending on what your product is, you'll need different displays. But like I said, a table should be fine. If you have little pieces of jewelry, you'll probably need a jewelry rack. 
If you have paper goods, you'll need paper weights to make sure that the goods don't fly away. You wanna bring displays that really show off your products and make them look really good. Kind of like how mannequins make the clothes look good at retail stores. And then the last basic thing you'll need for your booth is inventory to fill your displays. If you're a handmade goods brand, you might not have a good amount of inventory stocked up to fill a booth. And so it's really important to start creating inventory way before the vendor market happens so that you have enough time to stock up on inventory. For myself, I do own a handmade goods brand. I make original apparel, so I wax candles, tote bags, stickers, decals, a whole bunch of things, and not too much of it is pre-made. I am mainly made to order. And so when I know a pop shop is happening, I'll dedicate a few weeks beforehand to bulk create a whole bunch of inventory. Speaking of inventory, that's the third thing you need to consider when joining a vendor market. You wanna have a variety of products so that your booth looks filled. You also wanna make sure you have samples at your booth. This is your opportunity to let customers try out whatever the product is, really touch it, feel it, smell it, whatever the product is customers should be able to interact with it and so you might need to make custom samples or just be aware that some of your inventory will need to be given up as samples you'll also need to consider packaging because as an e-commerce site your online orders might be packaged up differently than how you'd package them up in person you also want to consider making sure that your products don't break or get tarnished or somehow get messed up after the customer buys it and is carrying it around the rest of the market in their shopping bag so definitely consider some sort of padding and also consider the weather if it's a really hot day or a really cold day depending on your product again while your inventory is sitting on that table they might get a little bit messed up you might want to bring something to protect them some sort of packaging to keep them in so definitely consider that before doing your first vendor market fourth thing to consider is logistics general logistics how are you going to take payments is the first thing i can think of online it's really simple because you have a shopping cart on your website but in person you will most likely need to do some other sort of method if you plan on accepting cash it's important to keep a cash box or a fanny pack with extra change in there if you plan on accepting credit card you need to have a credit card reader tap swipe chip reader because people prefer different methods and then you also need a way to provide receipts for people I personally use the Shopify platform and they have an app called Shopify POS where I can take orders through the app and the receipt gets emailed or texted to the customer. Other logistical things you want to think about is how you're going to get the inventory from your home or your studio, your business place over to the market. Transporting things could be dangerous. <laughs> you want to make sure everything's packed up well together so that nothing gets ruined in transit. I personally have a bunch of bins, these like big plastic hefty bins that carry pretty much everything and then a lot of my inventory I store in cardboard boxes and I also have a wagon that I use to bring everything over from my car over to the market because sometimes you can't park right in front of your booth you have to park a little bit further away and bring all your heavy stuff over to the booth so having a wagon helps and the last logistical item you want to think about is marketing if you're an online site you might not have business cards so definitely invest in some business cards or thank you cards that you can give out to your customers or if people decide not to buy something and they just want to check you out later make sure they have a way to contact you or a way to check out your website or social media some people have a qr code at their checkout desk or in front of the canopy tent so that people can scan the qr code and the qr code leads to the businesses instagram social media email whatever it is in order to make your booth stand out against all the other vendors you also want to have a cohesive aesthetic within your booth. You want the aesthetic to match your brand aesthetic, but you also want it to pop a little extra in person. Macy products make it really easy for your brand to stand out because all the products look really professional, really aesthetic, really clean, and there's so many ways to customize them. So when I have my booth setups, people always comment on how aesthetic everything looks and how all the candles look super legit and they don't look handmade. So definitely choose displays, inventory, packaging, that make everything look really cute, aesthetic, and very you. And then honestly, after you have all of those things, you are ready to do your first vendor market. However, there's one last scary thing we have to tackle, which is the fifth thing to know before doing a vendor market, how to interact with customers. This could be the scariest thing because as artists, as creatives, sometimes it's hard to communicate why customers should buy from our businesses. But the key is to just be friendly, ask how people are doing, don't be too overbearing, let customers peruse your booth as if it's a retail store, but if you see people interacting with one of your products, 
ask them if they want to know more about it. Or you can offer them some really quick details like, oh, this was made here, or I handmade this. That comes in three other sizes if you're interested. Little anecdotes here and there. And if they seem to want to know more or want to engage with you more, you can offer them even more details. It's really important that you know everything there is to know about your products and your business. Not that you don't, but sometimes we forget little things, you know? Sometimes customers ask exactly what country certain materials are made in or they ask exactly what percentage of alcohol is in these hand sanitizers, little things like that. And it's really important that you know the answers to that because if they're interested, that probably means they want to buy something. And you don't want your lack of knowing those little details to kind of scare them off. And what also helps with interacting with customers is making sure you have snacks and making sure you're drinking plenty of water. Vendor markets are usually long and they could be draining. So don't forget to take care of yourself have a good time, drink plenty of water, enjoy your booth, be proud that you signed up for your first vendor market and that you're doing all the things and it'll all be great. And that's pretty much all you need to know before getting started with your first vendor market. So if you have any questions, leave them below. Thank you for watching.